Hey everybody, welcome back to World History with Mr. Finn. Uh, today we are going to just finish up feudalism. So not a crazy lesson today, a pretty short one, but uh, I, you do have an assignment to do because we are uh, putting a wrap kind of on the idea of medieval Europe and the way that you would think of medieval Europe in the Middle Ages, like, like in the movies with castles and knights and joust and all that stuff. So we're going to put an end to that today. Uh, if you remember last class, we were talking about how feudalism had formed. Feudalism was a political and social system that was created basically after just years of attacks by you know different invaders into Europe. Uh, and so the idea of like a large empire couldn't exist anymore because it was just impossible to control it and protect everyone within it. So these smaller uh, kingdoms kind of popped up. The local person who was in charge would rise up and they would take control and have, you know, you know, political authority over their small area. And by small area, I mean this could be, you know, a few hundreds of miles. I mean, like it could be a large area, just not as large as, say, you know, <laughs> the Carolingian Empire or the Roman Empire, or any of those like large ones that were like the size of big countries. This would have been more like city sizes uh, for you to kind of have an understanding of what we're talking about. So these men who took power in this feudalistic society, uh, let's finish talking about feudalism. If you remember, uh, the person who had the land or owned the land was the Lord. Uh, the Lord was uh, owned land. Uh, the person beneath that was a vassal. Uh, they got land. But when the vassal got land, they would have to, it's a little light, um, they swore uh, an oath of loyalty to the Lord. So the vassal, uh, if you remember, uh, basically his responsibilities would be to um, uh, pay money, in the sense of, uh, you know, a portion of what they earned, or a portion of their crops, maybe, um, you know, they would fight for the Lord. So, if the Lord wanted to expand into new areas or take over more land and fought against another kingdom, uh, his vassal or vassals, a number of them, uh, would fight for that Lord. Uh, and in turn, that Lord, I mean, if the Lord got captured, they were to try to save him and things like that. Um, this is a feudal contract, you know. It was an agreement between the vassal and the Lord. These are the way things, this is the way things go. I'll give you this land. You can have power within that land. Because this, remember, what would happen is the vassal would get land, but the vassal could also become a Lord. If they own land, they had political authority on their land, and they could split it up. You know, like we had that the big drawing, uh, more vassals. Uh, and so this vassal would then be a lord and a vassal, um, meaning that they owed allegiance to this lord, but they, they had vassals of their own, and his vassals would owe allegiance to him, and so on and so on and so forth. The point is feudalism gets really complicated because it's like, who do I owe <laughs> my allegiance to? Who, you know, who is in charge? Who is what? Um, and you get this, the word is intricate, very complicated system of like nobility. Um, so this is where you get like this second layer of people is called the nobility. Nobility is going to be a class of people. And we'll say this, an upper that's the way we'll that's the way we'll think of it. An upper class of people. So these would be the people who had a lot of land themselves, they had a lot of vassals themselves, they were in charge of a lot of different things, they would be politically strong, uh, they wouldn't have too many people above them, and that would be the nobility. Uh, and they're gonna play a major role moving forward with some things. Um, but uh, so the last kind of terms that we're talking about, remember when I said the vassals would get land to live on. This land, as a term, is called a fief. So 
let me give you the definition. It's a pretty, pretty easy definition. A fief is a, uh, is, or just is land given to a vassal. Pretty simple. It might be on your quizzes. Uh, a piece of land that is given to a vassal by a lord is a fief. Um, we talked about knights and the idea of, um, you know, these knights, these armored cavalry, these men who would fight for the lords. This is how, you know, a lord would expand. They would fight these other kingdoms. And because remember, eventually after the, after the Vikings got assimilated into Europe, we're talking about the years of, you know, 1,000 to like, 1200 in that range we're really going to see this rise uh, of feudalism where you know hey the vikings are gone there's not really a lot of outside a lot of outside forces that are trying to like destroy uh, Europe so really what happens is these these kingdoms uh, start to fight amongst themselves so these lords are fighting amongst themselves in Europe um, because those threats that began feudalism are now kind of gone uh, so some things that pop out of this feudalistic society uh, this is another term for you. Chival chivalry. I think it's with an A-L. Yes. Chivalry is very simply a code of ethics. So chivalry, uh, we use the term today. It's still a term that we use. Chivalry would be generally used today to mean things that someone does nice in like dating, for example. So uh, if I am with a, my significant other and I get to a door, I open the door for them, that's chivalry. I'm doing something, it's a code of ethics. Um, you know, I open the car door for the person. I, you know, you see in the old timey movies, someone like gets their coat and throws it on the over the puddle so the so the girlfriend can walk across the the water without getting all wet. Uh, things like that are uh, chivalry today. And back then, chivalry did mean um, the proper way to treat people uh, and you know females to males. However, it also meant you know, an overall code of ethics, how you are supposed to live your life. So today it's kind of been boiled down to an idea of like a dating type thing, chivalry, the man is supposed to do this and that, all this stereotypical stuff. Um, but at the time of feudalism, it was, you know, a, a code of ethics that like basically your entire life would revolve around. Like, how am I supposed to act towards my Lord? Uh, how am I supposed to treat, you know, you know, women and children or civilians, uh, what, are, what are proper things to do, what are improper things to do. Uh, and this code of ethics comes out of this feudalistic society and these knights uh, who have been fighting. Uh, knights also do tournaments, which, you know, isn't super important for this, but you may or may not have seen uh, examples of these tournaments like the joust, uh, sword fighting, all of these things where it would show off a knight's ability to fight and do these things. Um, and there would be rewards and they would get uh, perks from it, notoriety from it, money from it, land possibly from it. Um, and this is what feudalistic society kind of turned into. One of the big things um, like that you would imagine, I would, I would think, would be the idea of knights, one, you know, the armored horsemen, uh, but also uh, this defense. We start to see castles. Castles start to form. What are castles? Castles are basically um, a protective, I don't know how you would explain it, it's a castle. Um, it's a building that is a protective building, large walls, uh, you could go inside it, it was easy to defend. That was the purpose of a castle in the first place, is that you know, the people would be living around the outside of the castle. If there was any threat or anyone tried, tried to attack that area, people could run inside the castle and they could defend themselves from this castle. So these castles, um, you know, they basically just start popping up. They start popping up. That's not a definition, it's just part of your notes. Um, 
all over because if you had a kingdom and you wanted to protect your people, you would build a castle. The people around it would be peasants and farmers and they would live around the castle. The castle would be like the central piece of your kingdom. And again, in the early days when someone would attack, the people could run into the castle and they could defend themselves. Um, it was a very basic form of existence, feudalism is. Uh, again, it is as simple a system as you can have. And the reason for it is because large royal governments were not able to work because of these people attacking. So what do they do? They go to this basic idea like, hey, I have land here. I have power. You work for me. You protect me. You fight for me. And we're on the same page. And I'll give you some land. And it's like they would just band together in these small groups. So these kingdoms start really small. But... As you get through the years, they start to grow, the noble, the noble class starts to grow, the power that these people have starts to grow, and so you start to see, you know, the rich, nobility, titled people, and then a lot of just poor peasants living a very rough life. Uh, and that is what is going on in what we call the Middle Ages in Europe. Um, I think, I think that pretty much puts a wrap on, on the idea of feudalism. And what we're going to talk about next is how we start to transform you, actually getting to like real Europe. Uh, because we have seen, we've gone a ways, guys. Like, um, if you remember, we started Europe. I have to really erase that. Um, we started Europe in the 500s. And we had that run of still maintaining empires all the way until around 800 with Charlemagne. And then we're talking about getting to 1200 in this range, in that Middle Ages, that like real Middle Ages, that, you know, it's starting to have its own kind of um, system and feudalism is taking hold. Um, but a lot has changed. It's a long time if you really look at this. I mean, it's 500 years just to get to the year 1000. It's 500 years. I mean, think about how long the United States has been around. So. The idea that, you know, we're going through this pretty quickly, but I always like to bring up the fact that as we go through the Middle Ages in Europe, I mean, you're talking seven, eight hundred years before we start to see the transformation into like monarchies and stuff that I'll tell you about next time. So just keep in mind that this is a long process that we're talking about, and it goes quick uh, because we're in class, but I did want to bring that up. Um, so anyway, let me tell you about today. I said you had an assignment. This is one of the easy assignments, guys. Uh, we are talking about the Middle Ages. And as I've told you before, man, I really got to work my, work my muscles here to get this blue out of here. Anyway, um, as you have done before, when we see new chapters, when we look at new topics, uh, things like Rome, and we did this with the Mongols. I like to have you look up images to see what I am talking about in case you do not know. So what that means is um, images of Middle Ages, and you can even put on your search, Europe. If you type in Middle Ages, Europe, and you click images, you will see a ton of different images. Uh, you will probably see castles, you'll probably see pictures of knights, you'll see all kinds of different images of the Middle Ages. And what I want you to do is just take some time to look through these images and see what you see. Middle Ages, uh, make sure you say Europe, images of Middle Ages Europe. Uh, again, each picture is only two to three sentences each picture and let's keep it simple let's keep it with five because you'll see some things but I mean there might it might be like a lot of pictures of knights and castles and tournaments and jousts and the same thing again because it is very you know the middle ages or medieval times are very specific <laughs> with what they show That's, everyone thinks about castles and knights and all that stuff uh, so five images, two to three sentences, each picture telling me what the picture is, describe it, tell me what you see. Um, and again, because this is the point is I want you to be able to see what I'm talking about in case you have not for some reason seen it. Uh, and that is your assignment. So make sure you get that into me today. 
Uh, we'll look at what's going to happen to Europe moving forward now that we've gotten to around the year 1200 next time, and we'll, we'll put a wrap on it. But on that note, uh, again, make sure it's today that I see this and for attendance and participation purposes, and I will see you next class.